Battlefield 5 is an awesome game, even with all the bullshit political correctness around it. The multiplayer is excellent, but there are tons of videos about that. In this video we will be taking a look at its single player campaign. People often forget that games which are mainly multiplayer titles have a campaign, but once the game is sold that all the servers are down, the only thing left to play will be the set campaign. It will outlast the multiplayer, so later generations will have only that available if they wish to try this game one day. So it better be good, right? Battlefield is kind of a strange game when you think about it. It wants to be taken seriously, it wants to be historically correct, and yet it takes creative liberties which essentially make that target unreachable. Up to Battlefield 4 and including it, we always had a protagonist who is trying to stop some sort of catastrophe, an actual hero, someone to follow and cheer for. Lately DICE have been stepping back from that typical action hero scenario and trying to give us a character, and actually multiple characters, who are more down to earth and feel more real and vulnerable. Their stories are usually dark and happy endings are a luxury which we get to see less and less often. That's not a bad thing necessarily but the problem is that in order for us to care about a character we need to spend more time with them and get to know them better. It's not enough for the developer to simply tell us that this is our character and we are to empathize with them. But let's take a closer look at the individual storylines and see if their stories manage to move us. The first one follows a convict who is offered a deal which would enable him to leave prison, but place him in the ranks of a covert unit whose job is to perform secret sabotage operations behind enemy lines. The campaign has some humor in it and is the closest thing to an action hero story. Your character acts rash and irresponsible and faces incredible odds which he then manages to overcome with ease. This scenario is the least interesting one because it presents a boring story and the gameplay elements felt unimaginative. The story has been chewed up a thousand times before and I'm fed up with it. It's essentially about that one bad boy who's actually a good guy deep inside and even his crimes for which he was imprisoned were actually not really his fault. In order for me to care for such a protagonist, I will have to spend a lot more than two hours of gameplay and sadly we don't see any of that happening here, all these missions are fairly short. What we do see however is that the game is gorgeous from the start. Obviously it's just as pretty as when you play it in multiplayer, but there the gameplay is hectic and distracting, so the player never gets too much time to look around and see the details of the maps. Here you can really take a closer look and the visuals are stunning. It supports HDR as well as ultra wide aspects ratios such as 21 by 9 and 32 by 9. The second scenario follows a brigade of black soldiers who fight against incredible odds and keep winning. The story here talks about how these soldiers came to fight for a country they had never even seen before, but they were treated without respect and not seen as equals by their white comrades. So even as they achieve their primary objective, they decide to push on and basically do what the white soldiers before them never could, hoping that this will earn them the respect they deserve. The story is quite uninteresting, especially because it sounds unreasonable beyond belief. On the other end, however, the gameplay here is excellent. It puts us in the shoes of one of these soldiers as they all storm several heavily fortified positions. It feels like Omaha Beach all over again with a hail of bullets and enemies everywhere. The chances of survival in such a situation are so low that any soldier who does will probably be traumatized for life and never want to have to storm a fortified position in their life again. But not our guys. They keep pushing on against even worse odds and even as they lose more and more men they continue to keep pressing forward. This is why I cannot befriend myself with this story. It's unreasonable and downright stupid. The only part of it that I actually enjoyed was the ending. That was done well and managed to give the whole thing a more realistic feel, but overall I was not a big fan of this particular scenario. Next we go to Norway where we get to play as a female Norwegian commando. The mission is simple, rescue and extract an ally, however it's made interesting by the fact that you are moving within snowy forests and mountains. Stealth is the better approach here, especially if you want to play the maps as they were really intended to be played, but going loud is also an option and even required in some cases. The voice acting here is also excellent, even though I don't speak Norwegian myself, I still found it enjoyable. Naturally realism is non-existent here and you are essentially the strongest woman to ever exist, but if you try to play the missions using mostly stealth, 
the absurdities are kept to a minimum. I can even forgive the Deus Ex Machina which seems absolutely inappropriate and unnecessary and feels like it was inserted solely to prove that our character is superhuman and cannot be killed no matter what. And just to give you a feel of what I'm talking about, our character is moving through the snowy blizzard, it is extremely cold, she falls into some water so gets wet, freezing cold water gets out, walks into the blizzard, starts to suffer from hypothermia, passing out and then manages to wake up, you know, being told to go on by her mother in her head, telling her go go you can still do it and she gets up, you know, she basically wakes up from this dying state and moves on and even faces a German soldier who is male by the way and manages to subdue him in hand to hand combat. Now that it's it's absurd no matter how you look at it, even a man in this position would have been severely weakened and actually would have died as soon as you pass out when you're freezing. You do not wake up after that and just go on again, that's not how it works. Hypothermia kills you. Still, this would have been okay if only the deeper story around the person we are trying to extract was not so mediocre. Battlefield wants us to know that during the Second World War, there were many unsung heroes who contributed to the victory over the Nazi regime. But it does it in such an unbelievable and stupid way that it makes every single story absolutely retarded. And I'm sorry to use that word, but it is true. I'm glad to say that the heroine doesn't have a prosthetic leg and a hook for an arm this time. At least we were saved that nonsense. The final scenario is simultaneously the bravest one because it actually lets you control a German tank commander and portrays him as a human being and not as a savage moron who is possessed by a demon. I say this because usually games like to portray the Nazi forces as cannon fodder. It is as if every soldier on the battlefield was Hitler himself and they are all evil and strangely enough they are unusually stupid. They are all weirdly stupid in these games. Well, for once we find ourselves not only in the control of a Nazi officer, but in the control of a human being. His whole squad is interesting and likable, the war is ending, the Germans are losing, the soldiers are afraid, but have no choice but to fight on. This is not about any specific ideology, it's simply them against the enemies, who seem closer and closer. After the bland scenarios before this one, I was truly surprised to find that this one is actually good. It's not long but it tells a very compelling story and presents you with a likable character. Actually multiple likable characters. I applaud DICE for crafting a mission from the perspective of the Nazis. It's original and actually both good in terms of gameplay and story. The characters all act as you would expect real human beings to act. They are aware of their mortality and exhibit fear of both death and the impending end of the war which probably will lead to their death anyway. This is something I have always wanted to see, a game where the player gets to be on the side of the Nazis, the bad guys. A story from the perspective of the bad guys can sometimes be very interesting, especially if done right. In any case, this scenario ended up being the one that I ended up enjoying truly and it is sad that it's just so short. The voice acting is excellent, the gameplay is interesting but above all it offered an original and believable story. There were no deus ex machinas of this extreme kind, like minor things where you, you're in a tank and you're facing off like 10 other tanks and you manage to survive and your guy basically repairs the tank in, from inside while you're fighting the other tanks. That's all of this. Now I know that the German tanks were superior but you know it seems a bit over the top. Still it is not as extreme as the hypothermia example. If you actually own Battlefield 5, you should still give this campaign a shot. It's short and while most of it is quite bland, it's still something worth playing whenever you get exhausted from the actual core of the game, the multiplayer. It's definitely not the reason anyone will buy the game for, but a nice bonus on the side. This is where I wish to thank you for watching my review. I hope to see you on the next one and wish you a wonderful day.